At the Last Supper, Christ repeatedly taught about the importance of keeping all his commandments. He didn't say, if you love me, follow me on social media, or like my posts, or type amen in the comments. He wants us to do what he says. In John 14, 15, Jesus teaches, if ye love me, keep my commandments. In verse 21, he says, they who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. Verse 23 says, those who love me will keep my word. In the next chapter, we see the same emphasis. Chapter 15, verse 10 says, if ye keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Verse 14, you are my friends if you do what I command you. Christ clearly wants us to keep his commandments. I want to share a personal story that I'm reminded of when I think about the Savior's phrase, if ye love me, keep my commandments. It has to do with this pamphlet that you see on the screen. Towards the end of my mission, the church produced this pamphlet, and when the mission president gave it to the missionaries, he gave us a new mission rule. The rule was that anytime we had an appointment with someone and they didn't show up, we were supposed to write our names and phone numbers on the pamphlet and put it on the door in hopes that the person would be touched by the pamphlet and call us. At the time, my companion and I were busy teaching lots of people. We met the McGee family. The father was not a member, the mother was not active, and their son Jeff, who was 14, had not been baptized. The parents didn't really want to talk to us, but Jeff said he'd be willing to meet, so we set up an appointment. It was a hot afternoon. We showed up, knocked on the door, no response. Knocked again, nothing. We thought to ourselves, Jeff's 14, he probably isn't really that interested in meeting with us, so we got in the car, cranked down the air conditioning, and as we were driving away, we remembered, oh, we forgot to put the pamphlet on the doorstep. Look at this pamphlet. Do you think a 14-year-old boy is going to be very interested in it? I don't think so, but there's something valuable about just being obedient. So we stopped the car, got out, and right as I was putting the pamphlet on the door, the door opened. It was Jeff. Turns out he'd been taking a nap, and it just took him a long time to get to the door. So to make a long story short, Jeff got baptized. Now, to make a short story long, Four months later, it was the last week of my mission, and I'd been hoping and praying that in my final transfer, I could help one more person get baptized, but it wasn't happening. All the people we had been teaching had told us that they were no longer interested. It was a really hard, discouraging time. It was a Tuesday night, exactly one week from the day I would be flying home, and we were at the McGee's family house. After Jeff had been baptized, Jeff's mom had started coming to church, so we were teaching a lesson for new and returning members to help strengthen Sister McGee and Jeff. Right as the lesson began, Jeff's dad walked into the room. Jeff and his mom had told us that Jeff's dad made fun of them for going to church, but I was a bold missionary, so I said, Mr. McGee, we're going to share a message with your wife and son. Would you like to join? He said, no. I said, oh, but Mr. McGee, it's a special message. Okay, he said, and then he sat down. So that's a tip for any future missionaries out there. You can remember that phrase, it's a special message. And it was a special message. We talked about faith in Christ, repentance, baptism, the gift of the Holy Ghost, and the Spirit was there. At the end, I looked at Brother McGee and said, will you follow the example of Jesus Christ and be baptized? A tear came into his eye, and he said, I've seen such a change in my wife and my son since they've been going to church. I will be baptized. I said, Brother McGee, five days from now, this Sunday, we're having a baptismal service. Will you be baptized this Sunday? He said yes, and he was. Today, it might take more time to prepare people for baptism, but this was back in the wild 1990s. I felt so much joy as I saw this miracle right as I left the mission field. Now, fast forward 14 months. I'm at BYU studying business and dating an amazing woman. There was some friction in our relationship, though, because I was ready to be serious and she still had doubts. At this difficult time, I got some good news from the McGee family. They were going to the temple to be sealed together, and they invited my old companion and me to come and join them at the Denver Temple. From Provo to Denver is about eight hours, and my companion and I planned a road trip. But at the last moment, he wasn't able to go. So I asked Lonnie, the person I was dating, would you like to take a road trip to Denver? To my surprise, she said yes. Now, those of you who have served missions know that on your mission, there are certain people that just love you and think you're the greatest missionary. So I took Lonnie to all of those houses. People would say things like, oh, Elder Hilton, he was the best missionary. And I'd say, yes, tell her more. We got to see the McGee family sealed in the temple. And then as we were driving home, Lonnie said to me, I think I'm ready to get serious. And we were engaged a few months later. Have you noticed how everything in this story hinges on one choice, one day, to put one pamphlet on one door? If I don't put the pamphlet on the door, we don't baptize Jeff. Don't baptize his dad. I don't get invited to the ceiling. My wife doesn't fall in love with me. My whole life collapses or succeeds on this one moment. 
Now, I want to be careful with this story because I don't want anyone to feel anxious or like, oh, well, I've made some mistakes in the past, so I guess I've ruined my whole life. That's not the case. At the same time, I believe that we do have pivotal moments in life. And I love this experience because I can pinpoint a chain of events to one little decision. We can't always see that, but perhaps in the next life, we'll be able to look at some of the small choices we've made and see a cascade of ways that has changed our life. Or maybe we'll reach out to someone and from our perspective, nothing happens, but later we'll be able to see how our small efforts made a ripple effect in another person's life. It's also true that sometimes we keep the commandments and life gets worse in the short run. But I know that in the long run, when we keep the commandments, we're blessed. And you never know which little choice, which time you put a pamphlet on a door or have family scripture study or decide to be in the place you should be or leave the place you shouldn't be or reach out to another in love is the time that will make all the difference. To see more videos like this one, simply search Seeking Jesus.